Greetings and welcome to Bubble Hearthing. I'm Bubble and you're fantastic. We're going to be going over all of the green cards today for Strixhaven School of Mages, the new set coming out on the 15th um, of April. Or I guess that's relevant, you know, what month? Who knows? Just the 15th. The 15th hour? The 15th day? The 15th month? Hmm. I mean, if we have... I wonder if we spent more time in like ancient Greece and stuff and Rome was like a bigger thing if we'd have more months. Anyway. Here we are. We're going through green. This is the last color I'm reviewing. I have reviews for all the other things out already. Um, beyond this, I just have the lands and colorless things, which should be a shorter video, and then I will be done. Oh my goodness. And and then I'll probably not play Magic for the next couple days, and then when it comes out, I'll actually, you know, play some stuff. Okay, so let's get into it. Accomplished Alchemist. A 4-mana 2-5. Uh, elf, Druid, Archer. No, just, just Elf, Druid, but Archer's, you know, implied. Uh, anyway, you can tap at 1 mana of any color. Okay, sure. And you can tap at X mana of any one color, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. That's a strange thing you can do. Um, I mean, elves might find a way to make this work, because elves, there's so many elves and so much support for elves, this probably has a home somewhere. But otherwise, it's just an expensive mana dork, really. I don't know how much life you're going to be gaining. Um, I guess there's some kind of combo where you can play things that give you a lot of life, like two mana gain five or whatever, or... You know and add value that way and ramp um but i don't see it i mean if you have a bunch of life linkers you can swing with them then tap this then play like a four or five get like you know extra four or five six maybe seven mana there's uh, there's potential there but i don't really see it if it had lifelink then no uh, because it would have to have lifelink and vigilance that's a oh God. no in standard this is um not that good at all and oh, does that say magic in the back there? Look at that, there's an M! Oh my goodness, I was covering it up this whole time. Magic. This is a little armrest. Anyway, um, <laughs> in case that needed clarification. Uh, but yeah, in limited, this is also like way too slow. Four mana, two, five, essentially. Yeah, you ramp for one, it can color fix, it's not very good. Okay. Oh, look at, oh, look at you, you're such a good boy, oh my goodness, I'm angry boy, but you're still a good boy, they're, they're all good boys. All right, Bayou Groff, a two mana, five, four, plant dog, oh, you're a plant dog, oh, how lovely. All right, where's the drawback? Doesn't have to have drawback, it's green. <laughs> At the initial cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or pay three. So, if you don't sack a creature, it's a five mana, five, four. Okay, it's a little, you know, under stats, but... It doesn't pass the vanilla test as it would be for an X mana XX, or, you know. But it's okay. And since green, there's a lot of tokens in this set just in general. Um, and green in particular makes, oh, green black likes to make pest tokens, which are 1 1s. When they die, you gain a life. So, hey, gain life, it works with this. Don't. Um, but those are some of the cheaper ones and easier to make. Um, you know, as far as like mana value stuff goes and things they're easier to make a few of those so it's more likely that in those colors you'll have a few things laying around um yeah this card's really good i mean what's the ideal thing one mana make a pest token somehow and then turn two you you just play this and and you go off and you have a good day um yeah you could even play the the red oh geez if your opponent okay so the dream play Turn one, you play a mountain, you do whatever you want with the mountain, I don't know. Um, turn, oh no, but it's a sorcery, isn't it? Oh, just got me right there. Because <sighs> I was going to say, there's the red, like, active treason thing, but if you target a token, then it only costs one, but it's not, oh, but you can't do it like that, because then you still have to pay three mana, whatever. Um, in standard, this card's not good. In standard, it's just, I think it's too slow. I don't know about you, but I think... Like, whereas you can just do like, well, hold on, this is going to be like the new Lovestruck Beast. You play Lovestruck Beast, turn one, make a 1-1, one, one. turn two, play this. Turn three, play the 5-5 five, five anyway. Um, change my mind, standard, Lovestruck Beast is like a 5 out of 5, and standard is pretty damn good. Um, maybe 4.5, this is going to be like a 2.5, maybe a 3. In limited, uh, I'm going to give it a 3, 3.5. I think you can make it work. If you don't have any tokens or anything, then just, worst case, it's 5 and a 5, 4. Okay, big play. Oh, big plays here. You thought that was a big play. Here's this big play. I don't know what it does. Uh, are you in your common? Oh, wow. I expect to see a few of these. 2 mana, instant. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains reach in the limited turn. And you put a plus 1, plus one and you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So for 2 mana, for the turn, this thing is plus 3, plus 3, and one of those kind of hangs around. 
and it gains reach. So you're paying extra mana to give it reach and have one of those Saint Linger versus Giant Growth, which just costs one green, gives something plus three plus three. Uh, not as exciting when you look at it that way. It's all right. I could see playing like one of these, but I wouldn't count on this to win you the game at all. In standard, this card's useless, and in limited, this is like a 1.5 maybe. It's not actually that great a combat trick. I'm not huge on it, but if your opponent's playing green, they have two mana lingering, just be aware this card exists, and it could definitely blow up in your face, as big plays do. Eight mana bookworm. Here's a big guy. Hang yeah, on, there's the worms that the green is known for. All right, seven seven tramble. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life and draw a card. You can pay three and put this from your graveyard into your library, third from the top. Am I wrong in thinking that in limited this is like a four out of five? So, way back when Palaka Worm was a card when it entered. You gained life, and when it died, you drew a card. This does both of those, although I think it gained you less life. And it's still huge, and it has like its own recursion, to a degree. Third from the top is annoying, but at least when it enters, you get to draw a card, so it kind of takes away one of those turns that you may have wasted by putting it back in there. Uh, wow. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is an insane threat to have. This is like a 4.5, maybe even a 5 out of 5 in limited. Like, this thing is... And it gains you life when it enters the battlefield, so it, like, helps you stabilize. This card is fantastic in limited. This is might even be, like, a first pick card. I don't care. Pack one, pick one? Maybe. Maybe. In standard, this is too expensive to really help you do too much against, like, a mono-red thing. You do that, they already have six other creatures, and they just attack around you. Um, but it's nice. It's, it's cool to have. Well, just a nice little, little thing. Charge through. Uh, one mana instant speed. Target creature gains trample and another turn and draw a card. Interesting seeing this in green. Just, you know, you usually have these things in like red and blue, sort of the little one mana uh, can trippy sort of things. But yeah, I, I love these cards. Never underestimate anything that costs one. And especially if it draws you a card. Oh my goodness, that's like super good actually. Um, in limited, this card isn't as good because you can't, you might not have like a dedicated deck focused to, you know, drawing a bunch of cards, or getting to a few key cards, but if you have Magecraft in any amount, I would probably just play this thing. Your opponent's gonna probably chump block at some point, and you'll be able to basically just say, pay one mana, deal two damage, draw a card, deal three damage, draw a card. If Shock drew you a card, it would see so much play. And stand in the standard, le standard, in that format, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can play this in like Simic or <laughs> Quandrix if you want to be weird about it. Um, yeah, absolutely. This card's fantastic. I, I, this, this card's fantastic. In, in the same way that like Rally of the Ranks or whatever, the, the one mana give all the things first strike or trample in red and draw a card was damn good in the deck that it went in. This card is damn good in whatever deck it goes in. We have a lesson that might not be that, that damn good. Containment Breach. We, do we go over Learn yet? I don't think so. So, three mana sorcery lesson. What's a lesson? We'll tell you in a second. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If its mana value is two or less, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. So three mana to destroy a weak artifact or enchantment and make a thing. Not that great, but that's what the lessons are for. So... A lesson card is something you can put in your sideboard or outside the game. If, you know, if you're playing casually, it's just wherever you have it, here's a lesson. If you're playing anything other than casual, then it is in your sideboard. It's one of your 15 cards in your sideboard. Um, you can also put it in your main deck, but you probably shouldn't because they're not very good on their own. Then, during the game, if you play a card that has the learn keyword on it, it gives you the option to either do nothing, and, and then just whatever you learn, I guess. L -l 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 the true lesson was Egypt. Anyway, um, maybe the real Egypt was forgiveness. That's the actual quote, and I just, I poorly memed that one. I apologize to any meme lords out there, um, you know, sincerely. But let's see. So when it says learn, you can do nothing. You can discard a card to draw a card, or you can add a lesson card from outside the game to your hand. So this will be part of your lesson toolbox. There are multiple cards that say lesson on them. They're all sorceries. They're all a little overcosted for what they do. But the fact that you can just pick whichever one you want, like, okay, I'm going to do that. Not too shabby. Basically, everyone gets, like, a fay of witches for some cards that are mediocre. 
it's okay. Literally, with all these things, you put them in your sideboard and you hope that you don't need them. That's it. That's it. If you have any learned cards. If you don't have any learned cards, don't put this in your main deck. There's no reason to. Um, Devouring Tendrils. Two mana. Sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. When the permanent you can... When the permanent you don't control dies this turn, you gain two life. That's... Weird wording, kind of. So... Yeah. It's nice. I think this is one of the few things that can target a planeswalker, though. So, let's see. You have to have a decent sized creature on the board. It doesn't take damage in return, so that's nice. It's not actually a fight effect, it's a punch effect, basically. It's just, I'm just gonna punch you, and what are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna die! Cool. Your tears will sustain me. Um, yeah, this is actually kind of neat. In limited, this is fine, because your creature doesn't take any damage from it, and you can even use it to get rid of planeswalkers. Yeah. Absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that. In standard, the fact that it's not an instant speed thing, and the fact that it also competes with Primal Might pretty... It doesn't really look good compared to that is um, a reason why it's going to see zero play. But Unlimited, yeah, yeah, this isn't actually bad. Dragon's Guard Elite. Yeah, I like the design here, the little sharp pointy things, you know. Is that a pine cone? Or are you just happy to see me? All right. A 2 mana 2-2 two -two with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, but a plus one plus one counter on Dragon's Guard Elite. So you just play some stuff, it gets stronger, it keeps getting stronger. That's a strong effect. Don't even think that it's not. Don't kid yourself in saying, well, you gotta play a few things. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that only gets bigger. And then for 6 mana, you can double the number of plus one plus one counters on it, which of course is exponential growth, right? Or is it, well, is it exponential? Yeah, you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Yeah, that's powers of 2. Um, so... Yes, that is something known as... And of course, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, two it can be like three nine twenty seven eighty one but oh no it's doubling so yes it is gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna cube the thing that would be insane okay no it'd be more like three six twelve twenty four okay my apologies there I'm, i like math and that amused me okay but yeah this card's fantastic and limited and might even see some standard play too not gonna lie two mana two two that gets stronger with some decent upside not even hard to trigger yeah, like 3 out of 5 in standard, maybe in 3.5. In limited, like 5 out of 5. I'm not even kidding. Like, you just take this card, you play a few instant sorceries, you win the game. This is this card's fantastic. Ooh, a mythic, though. What do you do? Ecological Appreciation. X, 2, and a green. Search your library and graveyard for up to 4 creature cards with different names that each have a mana value X or less and reveal them, okay? And for the record, mana value is just the new phrasing, the new wording for converted mana cost. It just takes up less space in the card and Wizard said it seems more intuitive. Which I, I agree, mana value, sure, versus converted mana cost, like what, what are we converting? Anyway, an opponent chooses two of those cards, shuffle the chosen ones into your library and put the rest onto the battlefield. And then you exile this card, okay, so let's see. So you search for up to four baseline, right? And they all have to have the same mana value or less. Oh, that's actually pretty good. So the more you put into the card, um, the bigger, um, the more expensive the creatures can be that you search for this. But it doesn't let you search any more creatures with noting it's always up to four. All right. And then your opponent picks two. It doesn't really matter if they pick the ones they want on the battlefield or in the graveyard. Is the... Well, I guess it does matter if you choose less than four. Because then your opponent chooses two of those for sure. So if you really wanted like one or two cards in the graveyard for whatever reason, you could actually choose less than four and guaranteed just use this as a way to throw things in the way. Um, it's a strange way to do it, but you can certainly do it that way. It's certainly an option. Foolish Burial is a card. Not in this game, but it is a card. Um, God, that thing's damn expensive. Or a minus one, no less. But anyway, <laughs> uh, back in the day, I'm just saying, Cool Little Hedgehog, man. Cool Little Hedgehog, one of my favorites. <sighs> Always have a special place. Anyway, so let's see. An opponent chooses a couple. Uh, in limited, this card's fantastic, actually, because they just go into the battlefield. You, it's a mana sink. You can do it now. You can do it later. You, you have options, and no matter what, you get some value out of it. Um, as long as you have more than two cards to find. So play it when you have, like, you know, X equals four or five. You should be perfectly good to go. 
you you only you might only get like you know a couple weak things. Hopefully, if you have a decent number of creatures that are reasonably sized, you'll be okay, and you'll net something off of it. And yeah, because if you pay three, then you can get two three drops. If you which is six mana there. If you pay four for X, that's seven mana. You can get two four drops, which now you're getting more value. So yeah, this card's good. Uh, in standard, I can see this seeing play just because it's a freaking tutor. Essentially, you put things in the battlefield. It can be super expensive, but we play seven mana sorcery things and win the game off that. So I could see us playing this anyway and making things work. This compares very, very poorly with Collected Company because it's neither an instant speed thing nor a cheap thing, but it makes me think about it. I don't know. There's some weird, like, there's some strange common denominator between these two cards that I see. There's like a weird connection. And so I think it makes me think it might be good, but maybe I'm just grasping at draws here. Okay. Emergent sequence. Ooh, sequencing. Sequences augmented. You enhanced. That's my attempt at an Abathur, um voice. I, I got to work on a little bit more, get a little more like deep and like guttural in there. Like, but you know. Anyway, two mana sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. That land becomes a 0 0 green and blue fractal creature token that's still a land. Put a plus one plus one counter on it for each land that you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. So ideally, you play a land, then you play this thing, and it has plus two plus two. I think I went over this one in the. Was it Quandrix? I think that's Quandrix. Um. Because I think the water mark in the backwards uh, in the back is Quandrix, so I might have looked at it in that review. Um, <clears throat> I really don't like this card, honestly. Sure, it's two mana. It enters the battlefield, which is cool, and it can be like if you just play this on two, and you know you play the land already. Yeah, you make a two two. But it doesn't have vigilance, which was a big thing for Nissa. Also, the big thing for Nissa was that it was a three three land. Bone Crusher is going to eat this thing up, so you're going to pay two mana to do nothing, to put a land in your graveyard. Well, that sounds like a horrible idea. Like, I could see having this see some play. I just want to straighten that. Um, if your opponent isn't playing any sort of burn at all or any sort of removal, but damn, that's a 2-2 a two -two is a really easy thing to kill. And yeah, but what if I play multiple lands every turn and then I can have it be a 3-3 three, three or a 4-4? Four, four. Okay, sure. You can pretend like this is going to happen, even though it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, this card, I just don't like it. I don't like it. It's like 1 out of 5 in standard, and I'm going to even say like in limited. <sighs> Makes your land really vulnerable. Doesn't really do too much for you. 1.5 out of 5, but you're also spending 2 mana to make like a 2-2. Two, two. It's essentially like a, yeah, like a mana dork for two, which, no, 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 no. Exponential growth. Okay, back to math. I love math. Pay X and X, as well as a couple greens, X, X, green, green, until end of turn, double target creature's power X times. Oh. Oh, that's nice. This is actually literally called exponential growth. I was like, what kind of growth is that? It's in the name. It's self-aware. So let's go down the, uh, the list of things. You can pay this for two and do nothing. Play this for, for two total, right? If X equals one, then you do one plus one plus one plus one is four. And you double their power once. Which is kind of weak for a sorcery speed thing. If X is two, then it costs six mana. You double it twice. So say you play this on like a three, three. It goes from three to six to 12. And I think that's big enough there. If you want to make x equal 3, then it's a little excessive, but also it's hilarious. And then you have 3, 6, 8 mana total. And you go uh, 3, goes to 6, goes to 12, goes to 24, like I mentioned earlier. And I'm, I'm assuming like 3 power is kind of average. Which can just, out of nowhere, win the game. If you have any kind of flyers that have like you know, 2 or 3 power, which is easy enough to find, this card can actually... Definitely be a winner. I mean, sure, it's rare, so you're not really going to face this too often. But damn, this thing can like come out of nowhere and just like, by the way, lose a good day, sir. <laughs> by the way, GG. Uh, yeah, in limited, I think this card is. That's actually really. Good. That's like super good. That's like so good. Okay, in limited. Um, uh, I'm just gonna say four out of five.
yeah, you need a creature with like something, some kind of power. And sure, it can just get chump blocked. Like, oh, well, I played my thing. It's a one for one, I guess. But damn, that's awesome. In standard, don't know how many times, like you don't want to put this on something with trample, of course, or something unblockable. And it's a hilarious card, don't get me wrong, but I don't really think it's all that powerful in standard, like because... Just a little, I'm gonna kill it, I'm gonna kill it, doesn't actually buff the toughness at all, so I'm just gonna kill it. Um, dies to removal is what I'm saying, which, yes, that's the best argument I've ever heard. Um, so, in standard, I'm gonna say classification sees no play. So, one out of five in standard. Just because it has X, so maybe you can sink more mana into it. And at some point, that's probably some point, I was like, well, you just made a 400-400. Sure, fine, you win the game. You made the 2048 thing. That's a separate game, but you win anyway. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Field Trip. Hey, for three mana, you can learn something. Search your library for a basic forest card. Put that card into the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle, and you learn. I already talked about what learn does, because we, we talked about a sorcery earlier. Earlier. Now you see a card with it, I do not need to explain it again. See? See how that works? If you were paying attention, you would know the lesson. Alright. So, let's see, uh, you search for a basic forest, and it goes in the battlefield. So it's cultivate, but you don't get the land into your hand, and you learn a card instead. So instead of getting a land to your hand, you get a lesson into your hand. Which actually doesn't sound terrible. Not gonna lie, actually, well, cultivate actually lets you search for... It doesn't have to be forest, it can be any um, basic land. So you can use that for mana fixing. Um, okay, so there's more of a drawback there. So this is more of a mono green sort of thing. It doesn't have to be mono green, um, of course, but it's only going to get you green mana, so what are you going to do? Um, hmm. This isn't actually bad at all. And you know, for three mana, in limited, this card's actually 2.5, even three out of five. This is actually fine. This isn't bad at all. This is decent for what it does. Um, as long as your lessons are all right, then I'm, I'm fine with this card. In standard, I think Cultivate is still going to overshadow it. I don't, and Cultivate doesn't really see a whole lot of play as it is. I don't believe that the lesson card you can get from this is going to outweigh just the versatility of mana fixing and guaranteeing hitting um, five mana. Because that's one of the advantages to it, is you go from three to five mana every single time. Because you put a land on the battlefield and you have one in your hand ready to go. Okay, Fortifying Drought. Drought? Drought? Drought. It's Drought, because it's like a beverage. Because drought is the opposite of a beverage. It is lack of beverage. Where is my beverage? That's what they all used to say back in the olden days. Oh, we're facing a massive beverage depletion. What do you know, Joe? My beverage is gone. Okay. Uh, one mana instant. Always pay attention to things that cost one and zero, but, you know, one's more likely. You gain two life. Well, that was fun. Uh, target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn. Where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. So... Baseline, gain two life, get something plus two plus two. That's actually okay. I'm actually super okay with this. There is a little bit of life gain synergy in the in the, this set. Not too much. You can definitely play this in like Selesnia if you have some clerics or angels or whatever, and suddenly you gain two life, cool. Activate some triggers, because there are life gain triggers and things. And then you buff like plus six plus six or whatever. There are a few with lifelink, which doesn't really help, you know. If you're gonna to try to do this, you know, pre-damage, but damn, like this is not a joke. Um, yeah, in limited, it's not a huge card, but it's very good for the value. So I'll say like three out of five there, maybe in three point five. I have no issues playing this card in multiples, even though it gets stronger. And in standard, I would be surprised if this didn't see play. So. For that reason, I'm gonna try. I knocked my D20 over, and I want to try to find the, the the 20 side again because you know I want all the luck I can get. Um, in standard, yeah, this is not bad. It's very aggressive, and it can kind of get there. I'm gonna say 3.5. I wouldn't be surprised if this all play, but at the same time, I don't think it's gonna necessarily be in a tier one deck because the life gain decks already do what they do pretty well. I don't really know if they need this because they're also like mono white or like black and white because there's like you know angels and clerics in both colors but throwing green into the mix might just not be worth it even though this card's pretty cool gnarled professor you're a teacher look at that you're not even oh well that makes you much less of like a nightmare fuel imposing giant green behemoth that's going to destroy me at a moment's whim my god you're like weird cthulhu meets leaf man meets like maybe bob ross but not exactly bob ross you just seem kind of chill because you have the beard but like oh my god we're all gonna die okay 
This is the profession that just fails everybody. No. So for four mana, you get a 5-4 with Trample. And when it enters the battlefield, learn. Oh, that's... Okay. Four mana, 5-4 Trample. So the drawback is that this is a green card. That's it. Because, like, it says learn, which means they probably put an extra mana into the cost somewhere because, you know, you don't get learn for free. There's always a drawback to that. Um, so I guess otherwise it'd be a three mana, five, four trample. It's just in my head, I'm thinking, uh, wow. Five out of five in limited. This card is great. This card's just good. Who knew, like, Cthulhu Ross would be good? I don't even know if he teaches art class. I hope so. Um, <laughs> and in... Jeez. In, uh, in standard. Wow, this card's got me like, at a loss for words. This flavor text is literally only four words. I can't even go in depth on that one. Um, wow, in standard, I think this might be like a 4.5, even like 5 out of 5 kind of thing. It's kind of slow because we have like three mana 5.5s, five but like this is... This is good. The only downside, like I said before, is that it's green. Like, how much play does Steel Leaf Champion see? It was a 3 mana 5 4. Or is it 3 mana 4 3? I think it was a 5 4. I don't know. Uh, Null Hide Ferox was a 4 mana 6 6. That didn't really see a whole lot of play there. But it was still kind of cool. Um, man, what's Hexproof Noah's? Uh, wow. Okay. This card's like insane. Okay. Wow. Really good. So, therefore, it's going to see zero play. Because I'm thinking, like, well, what do you think about the, the troll? Feasting Troll King that I thought was going to be amazing and is basically Hogak and Standard, and it did nothing. It was super slow. Yeah, that got nowhere. So maybe this gets nowhere too. Maybe this is in the same boat. But 7 mana versus five ma versus 4 mana is a huge gap. No, this card is still good. Honor Troll. What type are you? Free Folk Druid. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm, I'm definitely seeing Free Folk Druid. No, I'm not. What the Free Folk Nightmare, maybe? All right. Um, 3 mana, 2, 3 with Vigilance. If you would gain life, you gain that much, plus 1 instead. Hey, look at that, a little more life, because why not? Honor Troll gets plus 2, plus 1, as long as you have 25 or more life. If you had lifelink, I'd say you're okay, but you don't have lifelink, so i say you're bad. Um, literally, 1 out of 5 limited, and like, 0 out of 5 standard. Yeah, yeah, we went from awesome to just like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you going there? We don't know. If you have 25 or more life, you have a 4-4. Four, four. I don't even know if you would play this in Commander, where you start at 40 life. They're like, yeah, 3 mana, 4-4, four, four, Vigilance. Meh. Maybe. Uh, saying that a card isn't even a Commander card? No, that's bad. Alright, Karak Wrangler. A 5 mana, 3-3 three, three with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, put a plus plus one counter on target creature you control. So, it's expensive. For what it does and we saw this ability on like the 2-2 earlier which was super good except the 2-2 only buffed itself whereas this can buff any creature you like so there's value to that there's a lot of value to that but it comes out late and you have to have the follow-up like play this turn five the next turn you play like maybe two or three instant sorceries you want to trigger that thing as fast as you can otherwise you're pretty far behind on value um standard is useless there are you know just play the weaker ones and buff them up as you go um, or the cheaper ones, I should say. And in limited, okay. Um, because it's so slow, and you might just be so far behind, I'm going to say 2.5 out of 5. Better than a bear, but not by much. Leyline Invocation. For a second, I was like, oh, there's Leylines here? Oh my goodness. All right, but not quite. We're just invoking them. A 6 mana sorcery. Create a 0-0 zero, zero, uh, green and blue fractal creature token. Put X plus some of the encounters on it, where X is the number of lands you control. So, at the very least, it should be around a 6-6, six, six, which is okay. You can have it be a little more, and 7-7-8-8 seven, seven, eight, eight if you have a lot of land. Not really all that impressive. And limited, this is fine, because, you know, again, baseline, kind of 6-6, six, 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 unless you have some mana ramp, in which case it makes it weaker. But you can try to rush out like a 4-4, four, four, potentially, and... Meh, it's not really all that exciting. Um, it's nice that I guess you have something that has a bunch of plus and plus encounters on it, and you put a fractal on the board, that could be something. Also, it's a sorcery, so you trigger Magecraft while putting a creature on the board. There's a thing you can do. Uh, and limited, this, this card's like, okay, I don't know, 2 out of 5, not that, eh, 2.5, because at least it makes a big creature. And in standard, this card is useless. 
mage duel. I challenge you to a duel. Oh, and I throw a snake on the field. How did you do that? Oh my god, why? And then I, and then he speaks to the snake. Sorry, spoiler alert. Anyway. Hmm. Ah, I gotta love that void juice. Okay. For three mana, you get a sorcery. But it costs two less to cast if you've cast another instant sorcery spell this turn. So it could just be one. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of the turn. And then it fights target creature you don't control. Worth noting, this is a fight, not just a, I'm gonna punch you. This is we're gonna punch each other. Um, so if you cast anything before that, instant sorcery, this just costs one. It gets a small buff, whereas you can just play the... What's that? What's that? I want to say giant growth. I've named the thing before. Oh, the one primal might, I think it is. The thing, it's got a dinosaur on the front. It costs X and green for things to fight each other, and X, it gets, uh, your creature gets buffed with the X cost. So that largely, largely overshadows this card. In limited, this is okay, but to get the discount, you have to spend mana doing something else, which isn't all that good. So honestly, in limited, like one out of five. In standard, zero. It's not, not. Ooh, but it can cost one, yeah, but at the cost of spending mana somewhere else. No. And at, at three mana, it's a, not a very good effect. Alright, Master Symmetrist, a four mana four four with reach. Whenever a creature you control with power equal to his toughness attacks... Look at that! It did it! It gains trample until end of turn. Uh, let's see, I like how it comes like one after another here. And uh, Tondo lost his very first duel and has spent his entire life trying to get even. So, did he... At what age do you go to mage school? Like, do you go early on, or is it super late? Did you lose your first duel somewhere else? Were you not in school with the duel or whatever? Like, how long is your entire life? Is it like a few years? I don't... There's some part of the timeline that doesn't that up here. Anyway, this card's a 4-mana 4-4 four, four with Rage and Trample. Okay. 2.5 out of 5 in standard, maybe even like a 3 just because it's a decent-sized creature, and it has Trample, so... You yeah, know, that's nice. Your opponent can't jump block for too long. Um, or I guess you should say chunk can't jump block at all, really. In standard, this is not really something you design towards. It's something that coincidentally, like, okay, my love struck beast now has trample, and my questing beast also has trample, and it's a few things that can have trample in that sense. And my Kiora <laughs> Kraken token has trample now, which is awesome, but like, why are you playing this in your Soul Tide deck? You shouldn't be doing that. This is just a niche little thing that's kind of fun to design around, but doesn't really get anywhere. Um, there's better ways to get things trampled that don't have to have the same power and toughness. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun. You can play it, just don't count on it buffing anything else, and it's still decent. And standard is 0 to 5, but yeah, like I said, limited, like 2.5, maybe 3, just because decent body. Overgrown Arch. 2 mana for a 0 for Defender. You can tap it and gain 1 life. That's kind of legit. Or you can pay two, sacrifice it, and learn. You know what? If it was draw a card, I'd be all about that. You can still discard to draw if you like to, but... Hmm. I don't think this sees... Like, if a, if aggro decks are super, super strong, then maybe this sees play. If it's so overgrown, like, you can give it reach, honestly. Um, I wouldn't be upset if it was, like, vines and canopies and it has reach now because it's just going, like, through the treetops even. But it doesn't have reach. Um, so... Literally, for that one exclusion, because there are a decent number of things that, with flying in standard, I'm going to say, like, 1 out of 5 in standard. Even though it's nice, I play a 2-2 two, two thing that's going to block and gain me life a few turns. Okay, uh, how many of those are you going to play? Actually, they do well in numbers, but you still need to have something that kills, like, you know, takes care of the threat. Um, in limited, don't be tricked into taking this card. I would rather play anything else that really does something to the board, instead of playing this thing. If you have this with like the Phoenix where you can learn and instead put the Phoenix under the board, maybe there's that synergy. Otherwise, Professor of Zoomancy. 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 Okay. The Professor. Four mana, four, three. When it enters the battlefield, you make a pass token. That's it. Standard is useless. Limited, it's like two out of five. It's okay. Just because that's four power and the pass token can be relevant. There's life gain stuff, there's token stuff, the sacrifice stuff. There's nothing too flashy though. If you need it, you'll know. All right. Reckless Amplomancer. Hmm. Well, I like that word. All right, two mana, two, two. You can pay five and double their power and toughness until another turn. Just this one. You can only have this thing's power and toughness get doubled. So you can pay five mana and give it plus two, plus two. Feels bad. But if you pay ten mana, 
then it gets plus six plus six essentially uh, i guess the value comes in if you have any sort of other counters or buffs on it where it can get more than just plus two plus two linear growth what am i a first year ah uh, clever um but that's a lot of mana like i know you want mana sinks unlimited because you are probably going to run into the case where it's somewhat of a stalled, stalled board state or you have a lot of land then you just are top decking and you want something to put all that mana into but this is like really dude really really ah boring all right and standard is, is bad even though you can have like you know there's of course there's always going to be some kind of weird infinite mana combo you can pull off in standard historic or whatever in some format and yeah you can potentially make this in infinite infinite but you can already do that any number of ways if you have infinite mana so not exciting uh skurrid colony that's a skirt it's a squirrel look at you you look positively devilish two mana two two with reach it gets plus two plus two as long as you control eight or more lands this is like better value than this this can just always be a 4-4 four, four if you have 8 or more lands. This thing, you have to put 5 mana into it to make it a 4-4. Four, four. And it has reach. Come on. Limited 2.5 out of 5. I don't know how often you're going to have 8 or more lands, but it's okay. And when you play a 4-4, four, four, all right. It's not necessarily going to you know win you the game there, but it's kind of cool to have. And the reach is nice because you know, there are flyers in the set. There's flyers in every set, Jim. Damn. Um, standard is useless, but it's cool to see. So you spined Karak. Ooh, look! It just has flavor text. There's actually it's a vanilla card. Woo, three mana, two, four. Um, don't be convinced that this is good, because all oh, six stats, yeah, but it's statted fairly poorly. If it was a three mana zero six, like would you play it? Probably not. If it was a three mana five one, would you play it? Probably not. It's just gonna die every time. So this is not, again, a good distribution. Um, so it's like a two out of five. In limited uh, standard is useless, but maybe two, maybe like one point five out of five. But you don't, don't, no, 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 no. But we'll say this: the bogs are deeper than you realize. Most of the space beneath the surface is taking up, is taken up. Sorry, ah, oh, I was working on it. Ugh, okay, I gotta try for audition one more time. Most of the space beneath the surface is taken up by these enormous carrocks. You might think your feet are touching the bottom; they're probably not. Alrighty, what else do we have here? Spring main servant. Servant? Makes me think Sturvel, but this is not exactly a Sturvel. Okay, sure, you're a servant. Good to know. Uh, three mana, three, two. Enters the battlefield to gain two life. Alright, not that exciting. It's a 1.5, maybe 2. Point, maybe 2 out of 5 if you have any sort of life gain synergy. But otherwise it's not. Oh god, did I just freeze? I think I just froze. Hold on. Coming back. Okay, we're good. We're smooth again. So smooth. Oh, yes. Maximum smoothness. Okay. Um, unless you have any sort of life gain synergies, this is like a 1.5 out of 5. Otherwise, it can be like a 2, maybe 2.5 out of 5. And in standard, it's useless. Okay. There we go. Tangle Trap. Uh, two mana instant speed. Choose one. Either deal 5 damage to target creature with flying or destroy an artifact. Okay. In limited, you're probably going to have like one target this thing can hit. Maybe two. Still put this in your sideboard. Don't maidboard this thing. And in standard, same idea, sideboard. If you're playing mono green, that's fine. Just not really bad to have. It's just a typical green has something that kills flyers and artifacts. You see it in every set? Here's this one. A verdant mastery. Oh, the mastery card. Every color has its mastery, and this one is green. Uh, also, with every mastery card, there's the mana cost. It costs six, but there's a reduced mana cost you can pay. If you do, though, the effect is slightly altered. Usually, your opponent gets a little benefit, or it's, the effect is toned back. Let's see how this works. So you can pay 6 and do the normal thing, whatever that is. We'll find out in a second. Or you can pay 4 instead. Either way, let's see. You search your library for up to 4 basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them into the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control if 4 was paid. Um, put two of them into the battlefield tapped under your control, then the rest into your hand shelf your library. Okay. So the phrasing is a little little back and forth there, but let's see. You find four basic lands, put them into your hand, right? Essentially put them into your hand. Um, let's see. If, let's see. Then, okay, I'm sorry. Find four basic lands, put two of them into the battlefield under your control. If you paid the whole six, that's it. If you paid four instead, and, and then, you know, you put the other two in your hand. Um, if you paid four instead, 
your opponent gets one of those. You, you put it onto the battlefield for them. So you ramp them one. That's I'm not doing a great way of phrasing of phrasing this either. Okay, uh, but you you get what it is. Either you pay four, you ramp two, and you ramp your opponent one, or you pay six, you ramp two, and you have two lands in hand. Um, Actually, at that point, you really need to go from six to eight mana. Not so much, but do you really want your opponent to go up as well? Not at all. Um, I could see potentially if you're playing this. Oh, it's gonna be like so slow though. Jeez. If you're playing against an aggro deck where they probably dump their hand in the first like three or four turns, then yeah, giving them extra mana doesn't really matter too much. But do you want to play such an expensive thing that just ramps a bit when you might just be dead on board anyway? Maybe not. There might be no. They're basic lands even, so you can even give them like some kind of weird like poison land. I don't know if there is one out there, but you know, there's bronze. Bronze bombshell is a card, so why can't there be that version of a land? There probably is, but not a basic land. So, oh, sorry, Verdant Mastery, you're just not all that interesting. I cannot help you, unless you have some landfall thing where you want like you have the two lands entering, then you still have two more lands that can enter later on, and that makes your day. No, no, and please don't play this in limited, please. Do not. Do not. In standard, also do not. Okay, we're not playing that anymore. And that's it, that was the last one! Oh my goodness, huzzah! If I just stopped hemming and hawing over that thing, I could have had this in under 40 minutes, but alas, here we are. So, without further ado there, thank you so much for watching. The only thing I have left to do are the lands and the colorless cards, and we'll be done! That should be like a shorter video. I'm aiming for under 30. We'll see if I get there. Probably not. Don't bet on it. Um, but uh, if you like what you saw, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, follow, other words that current and creators use to encourage people to do things. Um, thank you for watching. Good night, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. But as always, good luck.